says to me.
Get my son! 
check. Testing. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to those of y'all that are here and to those that are streaming live to Faithful Missionary Baptist Church on this first Sunday in March, being able to stand and declare that God is good, that he is awesome and amazing, that he is worthy and mighty, that he is holy and righteous. He's our savior and he's our healer. It's a lot of folks who seem to be getting a little bit confused about who God is, but we know that the God we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we call him all those things because that's who he's been unto us. I can call him holy because he is holy. I can call him righteous because he is righteous. I can call him a healer because he is a healer. I can call him my provider. I can call him my protector. I can call him savior because that's who he is.
that little extra strength to shout on that one because there's nobody like God. You can search high and you can search low, but there's nobody like the Lord. Maybe he hasn't done anything for you, but for me, he kept me. When the devil thought he had me, God kept me. And for that, I tell him, thank you. Good morning, faithful. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts we praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. See, I know what he kept me all week long. When the devil came in like a flood, God raised the standard, Mother Sergeant. And I didn't fight that, that standard. I got on the standard and I rolled it out. Because I know God got me. When you know he has you, you can enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We gossip about a lot of stuff. But we need to be spreading the gospel. Because we get late in the evening. The sun is about to go down. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? Hallelujah. Good morning, faithful. I thank God to be able to stand before you to what they call open up the service, but I think the praise team already done opened it. I was feeling you, Rosalind, when you were saying, nobody like the Lord. this morning, I told him, you know what? If God take me while I'm praising him, what better way to leave this place? We get so caught up in, I don't want to leave. I don't want to go. Well, if you know you're going to heaven, you know you got it right with the Lord, it's okay to get up out of here. Because it's going to be no more heartaches. No more pain. Just hallelujah. Every day. Hallelujah, y'all. Nobody like the Lord. Nobody like him. Y'all, I struggled yesterday just to try to clean my house. But I told the devil, you defeated because if I can go to work five days a week, Mother Sergeant, I can clean my own house. I put that oxygen machine on and I begin to clean. But you know how he had a ram in a bush? Ah, <laughs> shit. Oh, no, no, no. My mother and daddy showed up. <laughs> God knew I couldn't move the furniture like I wanted to. But my 83-year-old daddy said, let me get it. The 
there's nobody like the Lord. It might be simple to you, but to me, that was a great thing to happen because I couldn't move it like I wanted to. But God, I say, God, thank you. Come on now. See those little things when you begin to bless God. He said, I'll open up a window and pour you out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive. Faith, I'm glad, happy in my soul. See, I bless him wherever I am. Because he's a right now God. Ain't that what Mother Flower would say? He's a right now God. That's shut down the gloom. I'm trying to move on, but my soul is happy. And I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I do give honor to the pastor has for on this morning. Lady Hanswell on this morning, Bishop N.C. Sergeant and Elect Lady Toy Sergeant, your deacons and deaconess, and all of you that are gathered in the house of God, and the other ministers. Y'all, it's just a good day to give God praise. It's a good day to give God praise. I'm going to say this and I'm going to move on. Y'all, the reason why I said we better get right Last Monday was 94 degrees. <laughs> Think about it. It was 94 in February. Winter time. And then come Wednesday, it's 43. Wind blowing, hail dropping. And y'all still playing with God. <laughs> You better get it right. Huh? Come on, people of God. We got to let the world know it's late in the evening. He can crack this sky in any second now. If you have your Bible, stay with me. We're going to go to Romans 5. And our pastor been talking about no more compromising and about faith, y'all. When you have faith in God, you won't compromise with that devil. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. <laughs> also, knowing that tribulation work in patience and patient work in experience and experience hope and hope make it not a shame. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. By who? By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and the hearers and the doers of his words. No, listen, y'all need to come to Sunday school. Uh, one of the sisters said, I don't want to live here without the Holy Ghost. Huh? The Holy Ghost going to keep us. The Holy Ghost is convicting us. The Holy Ghost is letting us know, get in line with God. Faith. Yeah, we got to have faith in God. We got to believe that he's going to do just what he said. And he said he'll keep us in perfect peace as our mind is stayed on him. What you thinking about right now? Are you thinking about your dinner, Sunday dinner? 
Are you thinking about it so pretty outside? I want to go to the park. What are you thinking about? He said, who that keep his mind stayed on me? That I'll keep it perfect. Minister, pass for it correctly. Keep your mind stayed on me. Lift your voice because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up, Lord. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Whatever your prayer request is, whatever name is on your heart, your mind this morning, if it's parents, if you're concerned about your children, children, if you're concerned about your parents, your grandparents, your loved ones, if you have health issues and challenges, something going on mentally with your mind, if there's anything that you have on your heart that you're concerned with this morning, I ask you to call it out right now as we pray, touch and agree. We're going to believe God today. And when we finish praying, we're going to get up with thanksgiving and leave it right here, trusting God that it's already done. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come saying thank you, Lord. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us just to make it into your house, to see another day that wasn't promised, God, that we live, move, and have our being, all because of you. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for your faithfulness, that you continue blessing us. Lord, when we know we don't deserve it, God, you continue to love us despite of ourselves, God. So we want to take time right now to love on you, to appreciate you, to open our mouth, open our hearts, God, and just say, thank you, Lord. We're so appreciative of you, Lord. Before we even begin to call out anything on our prayer list, we want to thank you for the things that you've already done, what you're doing right now, and what you're going to do. Father God, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Anything we have said and done against your will, God, help us to walk up right before you, God. Help us to do and be what you're calling for us to do and be in, these, in this season, in this time. God, I just ask you right now to touch your people, God. You already know what's on their hearts. You already know what's on their minds, Lord. You told us not to be anxious for anything, but with thanksgiving, prayer and supplication, we can make our requests be made known unto you. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So God, we appreciate that we can rest in your peace that surpasses all understanding. Whatever it is that's going on right now, God, any health issues, mental issues, God, you said that you would give us perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on you, God, that we're already healed, God, that you said if we call upon your name, we shall be saved. You said if we call upon your name and cry out to you, that you will hear, you will answer, and you will deliver us from our troubles, from whatever has us burned down today, God. So right now, we make up in our minds to open our 
our hearts to trust you, God, with our whole heart, to trust you, God, if we have a need. You already told us that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. So, God, help us to be obedient to your will and way, God. Help us to surrender and yield to you, God. We know we may have an agenda. We know we have a mindset of what we think things should be. But God, help us to say, nevertheless, not my will, God, but your will be done. God, help us to have the mind to want to live for you. Help us to have the mind to want to do what you're calling for us to do, to worship you in spirit and in truth, to praise you, God, with our whole heart because we are created to worship you God so I ask you to help us to forget about ourselves right now God to set it aside that whatever is keeping us from receiving from you God to hear your voice today God we surrender all we lay it at your feet those that are concerned about a loved one that's going through right now God give peace of mind and help us to remember God that you are the God that healeth us, God. You are the creator. And so to be absent from the body is to be present with you, God. So give us the strength and the peace to get through these challenging times, God. And if the loved ones, God, right now are going through something, will you strengthen them right now, God? Will you touch their bodies in a way, God, that they know that you are present? They know that you will never leave them nor forsake them, God. And help us to know that we got to give it to you. We got to cast all of our cares upon you, God, because you care for us. Because you can take care of our last God, our loved ones, way better than what we can. So, God, right now we lift up our voice. We decree and declare love will be released in the name of Jesus. Healing and health is already released in the name of Jesus. I made up mind to go all the way with Christ in the name of Jesus. We bind up the enemy, the devil that's trying to come against us, to hinder us, and to make us feel like we can't have peace. We cannot have joy. We cannot experience the love of Christ. We bind him in the name of Jesus. Whatever he's trying to do, the confusion that he is trying to present, that it will not work, that we come together, we stand together with our sisters and brothers, encouraging them, lifting them up, in the name of Jesus, God, we trust you today. We open our mouth right now, God, and say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I need your help. Lord, if you don't do it, it won't be done. Lord, I cry out to you, God. I cry out. I cry out, God. And I trust you. I let you know what my concerns are, God. And I'm going to leave them at your feet because I trust you're going to do just what you said. So, God, as we end this prayer, we end with a thanksgiving on our lips, our praise, and our hearts. Saying, God, I thank you that it's already done. God, I thank you that if you don't do it the way I think that you would have done it or should have done it, you're going to give me the peace to know you are in control. You are the Lord of my life. And so, God, we trust you. We love you today. We call out those names right now in the name of Jesus that we're concerned about. And we give them over to you. And we trust you today that all is well in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We seal the prayer in Jesus' name. We pray and trust you. And we say, thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. It's done in Jesus' name. Amen.
does the blood still work out there? I see a few people out there. Come on. Listen, right now, man. Oh, yes, I know. We just go declare in a building that we know that the blood still works. Here we go. Come on, quiet man, Jordan. by Giveify.com. Search for Faithful Missionary Baptist Church. You should see our logo, select it, and start your giving. You can also download the app to always be with you on your mobile devices. And lastly, you can always scan the QR code that will be placed on the screen during giving. We thank you in advance for all of your giving. Don't forget, if you have a baby that needs to be dedicated back to the Lord, we are now accepting participants. Please see Sister Kathy Taylor or Sister Tashana Young. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, on every second and fourth Sunday of the month, we will be having our children's church doing our morning worship. See you there. All current choir members and future choir members, please note that rehearsal has moved from Wednesdays to Tuesday nights. So join us to be a part of our growing and set on fire music ministry every Tuesday at 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you there. We will have prayer every Saturday at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Come and pray with our pastor. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and not to faint. Luke 18 and 1. You can come pray and leave as you desire. This is a time to tarry or just come pray in the house and leave after you've heard from God. All are welcome. Bible studies will continue on every Wednesday for the rest of the month. The 2024 Travis Lee Young Scholarship application is now available. Starting February 25th, 2024, the application deadline is April 28th, 2024. All eligible candidates and high school seniors are encouraged to apply. For more information, please see Sister Kathy Conright or Sister Tashani Young. We've told you to save the day. Now the time has approached fast. 
The installation service for our elect pastor, Byron C. Hansbar Sr., is March 17, 2024, at 3 p.m. Our special guest pastor is presiding bishop, Wiley Jackson Jr., bishop of Word and Action Ministries in Atlanta, Georgia. So let's show up faithful in big numbers, and let's get ready to bless the Lord. Women, it's your month. Yes, our Women Annual Day is here. And the celebration is beginning with our annual Women Brunch, March 23rd. And then on March 24th at 10.30 a.m., we celebrate our actual Women Annual Day. The attire is pretty powerful prayer warriors in shades of pink. So save the date as more info to come soon. He is risen. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Easter Sunday service is here this fifth Sunday, March 31st. And guess what? We outside that day. Yeah, you heard me right. We will be taking the praise and celebration outside on the parking lot to share our worship with our community. So dress comfortable and join us for our Easter Sunday service, 1038. All right, people. You know what time it is. If it's your birthday, you know what to do. At the count of three, let me hear you scream. One, two, three. Happy birthday. All right now, people. If you're here and you're celebrating your anniversary, we want to celebrate you. So on the count of three, we're going to shout it out. One, two, three. Happy anniversary. Here at Faithful, we love to praise God, and we love to love God's people. So we welcome all guests, friends, and family. At this time, we want to just tell you welcome. So on the count of three, I'm asking the entire Faithful family, let's shout it to them, let's smile at them, and if they're next to you, why don't you give them a hug? One, two, three, welcome to Faithful! Now, ushers will pass out connect cards so that we may stay connected with you. All right. Can we have any visitors in the house today? Any visitors in the house today? Any visitors? We don't have no visitors. We got one? Yeah, I see one. I see two. Okay, family, y'all know how we do. We go love on our visitors and let them know that we thank them for coming. We love them and make them feel a part of it right here at home. Here we go. One, two, three, let's go.
Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. If you inhale and exhale, then I dare you to praise the Lord. I dare you to give him honor, give him glory, give him praise. Because he truly indeed is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his holy name. Because he alone is worthy. He is worthy, 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 worthy to be praised. We serve a mighty God. Amen. And he deserves a mighty praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There should always be a thank you, Jesus, on your lips. Because God has been better to us than we have been to ourselves. God has brought us out of danger, seen and unseen. So we should always have a praise, a praise, a praise, a praise, a praise on our lips. Amen. Whether you're in the sanctuary, whether you're driving in your car, walking down the street, walking in the grocery store, in your house, that should always be a praise on your lips. Because God is good. He's good. Y'all stop. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. God is good. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Hallelujah. Somebody just woke up and realized that God is good. <laughs> Somebody just realized my God is good. And he's worthy, 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 worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Y'all got 30 seconds, 30 seconds. To praise him like he's worthy. 29, 27, 20 seconds, 15. Welcome, 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 amen, to the Faithful Missionary Baptist Church, amen, where we just love Jesus, and we don't mind giving him glory, honor, and praise, because he is worthy to be praised. Welcome to all our visitors, those that are streaming with us live from Facebook and YouTube, to our local, to our regional, to our international audience. We just praise God for you today. Thank you for your presence. I want to go on record saying happy birthday, amen, to all of those that are celebrating in the month of March. Amen. We praise God for you this month. Happy anniversary to those of you that are celebrating as well. Amen. Praise God for you. I want to say thank you to all of our hospitality. Amen. All of our ushers. Amen. Nurses, Gil, everybody showed up. Faithful family. Y'all showed up and showed out on yesterday as we celebrated. Amen. Sister Linda White's home going service. And I want to say thank you to all of you all that came out to celebrate with us. Amen. You all looked beautiful and you represented God well. Amen. Praise you the Lord. Amen. We're not going to prolong the service. Our choir is coming now. Amen. With our final selection and I will be up. Amen. We're coming out of Genesis the third chapter. So go ahead and turn there. Genesis the third chapter. Amen. Go ahead and turn there now. I'll be back with you shortly.
Father, we honor you in this moment, in this time. We praise you, we magnify you, we adore you, we glorify you. But truly indeed, you are worthy to be praised. Allow your word to go forth. The power, authority, deliverance, salvation takes place in this house today. We honor you in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Genesis, the third chapter. It's been a great week. It's been a phenomenal week, but I realize there have been some people that have been bound, that have been still struggling with sickness, illness, not just physical, but mental as well. And because of that, and because we realize the times that we are living in, it's time for us to take charge over that that God has given us. So this month we'll be talking about our series is on relationships on trial. Because we have to learn how to govern and regulate the relationships that we have found ourselves connected to. Our relationship with God, our, rela our relationship with things, our relationship with people, and our relationship with the devil. Because too many times we've allowed too many relationships that we have created, that we have made, to dictate our worship, to dictate our praise, and most of all, to dictate our authority that God has given us. So in this month, we're going to take relationships back to God and we're going to put him on trial. He's going to be the judge of the relationships that we have established for ourselves. He's going to be the judge and jury to let us know yes or let us know no. Amen. Because we got to take our power back. No more compromising. We got to realize who we are in God. Because I promise you, the devil is busy doing what he's supposed to do. But we're going to be even busier doing what God has told us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Genesis, the third chapter. We're coming from verses 1 through 13. I don't know that I want to read all of that, but let's see. It reads, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, first mistake, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate it. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam's, Adam said, I'm sorry, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. 
And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then he started tripping. Then the man said, the woman who you gave to me to be with me, she gave me the tree and I ate. Tripping again. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Thank God for the power of his word. As you take your seat, as you take your seat, turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, hang up. Turn to somebody behind you and say, hang up. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever knowingly, knowing it's a spam call, Knowing it's a robo call, robot caller. Knowing you didn't ask them to call you. And whatever they selling, you know you already don't want it. But sometimes you find yourself answering the call anyway. Do I have anybody, anybody? You find yourself answering the call and you already know that you don't want what they're selling. And then once you answer the call, you give them the opportunity to share with you that that you already know you don't want. So they have the time of, to talk to you and get your emotions all caught up in the situation and trying to sell you something that you know that you don't need and you already know that you don't want, but because you've allowed them to to wiggle into your emotions. You've allowed them to, to kind of speak to your mind and you, you've allowed them to kind of speak to your heart. You find yourself purchasing something that you know you shouldn't have purchased. Or even more so, you find yourself arguing with somebody that don't even matter. I should have had more amens than that. You found yourself fussing back and forth with that person you don't know. They might be from the Philippines. They might be from China. You don't even know. But you found yourself arguing back and forth with them about something you know you don't want and you don't need. Got your blood pressure rolls up. Got you mad and fire and hot. And in your mind, you saying things you know you're not supposed to say. But because you found yourself entertaining what you know you don't need and what you know you don't want. We got to learn how to hang up. Too many times we find ourselves holding conversations that we should not have. Too many times we find ourselves talking to people we should not be talking to. Too many times we find ourselves arguing back and forth with the devil when we already know we have power over the devil. We find ourselves going back and forth and allowing situations and circumstances to get our emotions all involved to the point where we have forgotten in that moment who we really are. We have to stop giving the devil because today we're talking about our relationship with the devil. We got to stop giving the devil authority. We have to stop giving the devil power. We got to stop listening to the devil. Because the devil's job 
is to deceive us. Period. His job is to deceive us. He already know if you're saved and if you really love Jesus and you're blood washed that you're on your way to heaven. But his job is to make your life on this earth a living hell. But understand his authority. But then understand your authority. When you understand your authority, can't no devil in hell make the life God has given you a living hell. Unless you give him authority, unless you give him power, and unless you're in his territory. We have a problem. We have a problem. Because in the word of God, we want to always blame Eve for what took place. But today I'm not blaming Eve. I'm not blaming Eve today. Because it don't even matter. Because at the end of the day, the Lord has come. Jesus has died. He's rose. He's given us power. All power. Just as he has all power in heaven and earth, he's given us the same power. So we're going to learn some lessons today from Eve. We're going to learn some lessons today from Adam and Eve. Because ain't no need of beating them up. They've done what they've done. But the thing that we ought to be grateful about is by one man's disobedience, sin came into the world. But because Jesus died, now we have power and victory and life on this life, on this side of heaven. So we can beat that up all day long, but now it's our responsibility. We got to take responsibility for our own lives. We got to take responsibility for our own Christianity. We have to take responsibility for our own salvation. We got to take responsibility for the God that has died for us and that has given us life and that has given us power. We got to take responsibility. We have to take responsibility. And in the word of God, the Bible says that the serpent came to Eve and they had a conversation. This is the problem that I have. And it's really not a problem. It's just an observation. When you read the Bible in Genesis 2, you see that God came to Adam and told Adam what tree not to be involved in. God spoke to Adam because if you read your Bible and you know your Bible, Eve was not taken out yet. Eve, read the rib out of, out of Adam's had not been taken out yet. God specifically spoke to Adam, told Adam exactly what needed to be done. So the devil had enough sense to go to the one that had not spoken to God directly. That's why we got to be careful because anytime we find ourselves holding conversations with the devil, do we really have God like we're supposed to? Uh oh, it got quiet. It got real quiet. Because what, what the serpent said? The serpent said, Did God really say? Did, 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 did God really say? So what did he do? He made, he made Eve question what God said. But this is my problem. This is my problem, like so many of us. Do you really know what God said? Because at the end of the day, if Eve was not created, but God told Adam, how do we know that Adam really told Eve what needed to take place? So what I'm saying is we got to learn how to seek God for ourselves. Don't stop coming to church. Don't stop listening to the word of God. But you have the responsibility to seek God for yourself. The Bible says in Psalms 37 and 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. When I seek the Lord for myself, it ain't nothing the devil can say. It ain't nothing the devil can do to confuse me. It ain't nothing the devil can say. It ain't nothing the devil can do to make me fearful. Because when I find myself seeking God for myself. Because how do you know? I tell y'all, how do you know that what I'm preaching is the word? How 
do you know that what I'm saying in Bible study is truly the word of God if you are not searching the scriptures for yourself? Because one day when I die, I'm going to have to give an account for my actions. And I'm also responsible for making sure that I minister to all of you all. So God's going to ask me personally, what did you do and what did you say? But also when you die, you're going to have to stand before the Lord and give an account for your own actions. And you can't say, Pastor Hansboy didn't teach me right. You, you can't say, Pastor Hansboy didn't pray me through. You can't say, Pastor Hansford didn't pray me out. The Lord is going to ask you, what did you do for yourself? What commitment, what dedication, what devotion did you have for me for yourself? So we got to learn as the people of God. That we have the responsibility to seek God for ourselves through the scriptures. Because the problem with Eve, she started talking too much. So many times we get to talking too much. It ain't rude to hang up on somebody when they finding themselves trying to speak into your emotions and trying to speak into your heart. We got time. We always, sometimes we, we want to do all that arguing and fussing. That my baby is over there. We want to do some arguing and fussing sometimes. Yeah, we want to do all that arguing and, and all that fussing. What we arguing and we fussing about? Because at the end of the day, what's happening? Our emotions is getting involved. And we arguing and fussing, our, 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 heart, our heart pressure just start rising. And then after a while, you start saying stuff. And don't say you don't mean it, because if it's in you, 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 you mean it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's facts. That's, that's facts. Don't play with it. I didn't mean it. You was a lie. I know that just hit somebody and hurt somebody. No, I didn't mean it. Yes, you did, because if it came out of your mouth, you meant it. That's why we got to be careful what we allow inside of us. That's why we got to be careful that we find ourselves studying and seeking God's face through the word of God. Because even when you get into a little conflict, you will be just like Jesus. When the devil came against Jesus, what did Jesus say? He didn't get into no argument with the devil. All Jesus said was, it is written. But it's impossible for you to say it is written to the devil or to anybody else that's trying to rattle your emotions if you don't know what the word of God says for yourself. That's why you got to seek him. The Bible says you got to seek him while he may be found. Because there's going to be a day, there's going to be a time where you're not going to be able to seek God's face. And you don't want to be one that's still left here. We had a phenomenal Sunday school, and I need people to start coming to Sunday school. We got great teachers. At 9 o'clock, I need y'all at Sunday school. We have to seek God through the scriptures. Because if we reading all of these love novels, all of these get-rich-quick books, all of these how to be a millionaire in 30 days all of these things that's that's rattling our emotion and and and, and getting us into a fantasy land this is not a fantasy. This is the truth on how we as the people of God must live. We got to study the word of God to show ourselves approved unto him. It's not about how you can articulate the word of God to people. Because at the end of the day, the devil know the word of God as well and can quote it better than a lot of us. That's why Eve was deceived because the devil kind of twitched the word. 
He kind of turned the word uh, to be kind of fit to write. And if you don't know the word, you got a whole lot of people preaching and turning the word. And you shouting and saying amen to it. It ain't nothing but a bunch of lies. I know I'm telling the truth because some of us done listened to some pastors and now they done had to come back and reteach because they taught wrong years ago. We taught you this last couple of years ago and they done took all your money now, so oh well. Yeah, they, they taught you a certain way and then you thought it and you and you grave into it and, and now they coming back and say, I taught you wrong. That's why you got to study. It ain't enough to just read. You got to search the scriptures. You got to search the scriptures for yourself so when the enemy come, which he will, when the enemy come, which she will, when the enemy come, which they will, you will be able to give an account. You will be able to stand boldly and declare the word of God because you've studied to show yourself approved unto God. A workman not needing be ashamed, but being able to rightly divide the word of truth. That takes some time. You can't just pick it up in there. Oh, that, I'm afraid to read this daily bread. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want none. That's the only time you read the word. It's the word. But don't let it be a trick of the enemy to make you think that's all you need. I'm looking at a lot of y'all and I ain't making fun of nobody. But y'all ain't just eating one time a day. I ain't talking about nobody. I ain't, I ain't talking about nobody. But you don't just eat one time a day. Some of us, we constantly eating. I'm always something, always constantly eating something. Eat a meal and then the next 30 minutes you slacking on something. Then you eat a big meal and then the next two seconds. You, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just using that as an example. Just as the desire we have to eat physical food we got to have an even more so desire to eat this word because we in the last days whether y'all believe it or not y'all we are truly in perilous times and I heard Minister Hawkins say this morning we got a president that was in president at one time and just everything went crazy and chaos and he probably gonna be the president again But we have the responsibility, regardless of who the president, we know who is the king of our lives. And when we understand who the king of our lives, he'll help us navigate through every situation in life, regardless of who the president is. But we got to know this word in order to be able to navigate through life. We can't navigate through life if we don't know the word of God as the children of God. Yes, the world can navigate and take the president's, take his word for it and take the news people's word for it. And take everybody's word for it. But we, as the children of God, we have the responsibility to seek the Lord for ourselves. The word of God says, seek and ye shall find. When you really seek God, you're going to find him. Why? Because he said, if, I, if you draw not to me, I'm going to draw not to you. So we got to find ourselves wanting to get closer to God. Because when we find ourselves wanting to truly indeed get closer to God, we won't be like Eve. Third chapter, eighth verse. The Bible says, I'm sorry, the sixth verse said so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise she took of its fruit and ate she also gave to a husband with her that sounds like first john when it says all that's in the world, 
is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And anytime we find ourselves allowing the world to dictate how we're going to live this life, anytime we find ourselves having the world dictate how we're going to walk in this life, we'll always find ourselves in a situation that's going to cause us to die. And you may not physically die at that moment, but anytime you're finding yourself having the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it's totally against God. And anytime we find ourselves functioning and flowing against God, and we find ourselves in the devil territory, then he has the ability as the devil to do to us whatever he desires to do because we are out of the ark of safety. But we out of the ark of safety and didn't have the unmitigated gall to get mad at God. Because we find ourselves tiptoeing with the devil. We find ourselves allowing the devil to be a, be a second, a back door seat, a back, a back seat driver, a rider. We shouldn't have any dealings with the enemy. The word of God tells us to come out from among them and be separate. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor seat in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, in which he meditates day and night. When we find ourselves meditating in this word day and night, we will push away the lust of the world. We will push away the lust of the eyes. We will push away the pride of life because you can't have this word in you and all that foolishness be in you. When we study in this word and we're seeking this word and this word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway, the devil has no room in our bodies. The devil has no room in our mind. The devil has no room in our emotions because we are going to quote the word and the word only. Because understand relationships. That's why this is relationship series anybody or anything that has the ability to impact your emotions you're in relationship with them say that one more time anything or anybody that has the ability to impact your emotions you have entered into relationship with them and with it That's why this is the time that we got to put our relationships on trial. This is the time that we got to lock in to God like never before. Because there are some things that are still in our soul. That because of relationships that we have, not had, but because of relationships that we have, we still bitter. We still angry. We still lying. We still cheating. We still fornicating. We still adulterating. We still cussing. We still worrying. We still doubting with our Holy Ghost filled self. How can we say that we love God and don't do what He say? can we say that we love God and we're not keeping his word people won't always say I, I, I just have a problem with some church folks y'all pray for me I just have a problem with some church folks that that want to continue in sin that grace may abound well I'm not perfect who said you was perfect? But anytime you have the mindset of, I'm not perfect, all you're doing is continually giving the devil more victory, 
continually giving the devil more power, continually giving the devil more authority over you because you are comfortable where you are in sin. Because there ain't no way in the world you're going to be comfortable in sin when you truly have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. It's no way for you to stay comfortable and still lying. It's no way for you to stay comfortable and still gossiping. It's no way for you to stay comfortable and still gluttony. There's no way for you to stay comfortable in sin when you really have this word on the inside of you. Because we got the responsibility. The word is going to, it's going to, it's going to examine us. Yeah, the word, the word, word is, it's, it's going, it's going to examine us. It's, it's, it's God's breathe. The word of God is God breathe. And it's responsible for what? Correcting. For rebuking. For correcting and training in righteousness. In righteousness. Not in hellish, but in righteousness. So when we study this word, when we seek God's face, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life has to go. It cannot stay. Why? That's why we got to have a heart of repentance. Not just asking for forgiveness. I say it all the time because I need you to get it. I need you to get it. Stop just asking for forgiveness all the time. You're already forgiven. Jesus died. For all your sin. Yes. He already did. He died for every last one of them. But this is the thing. You just keep on asking for forgiveness because you know you get back to do it. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. You're lying. Stop lying. Stop lying. Let's just be honest. Because y'all, some of y'all been saying, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry for the same thing for the last 20 years. Some of y'all been going around that same mountain for the last 10, 15, 20, 30, 45, 2,500 years. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. No, you're not. Stop lying to him. It's time. Jesus said, this, this, this is what Jesus said. That's, that's, why, that's why our mission, our mission is leading people to repentance through Jesus Christ and guiding them to kingdom living through the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because, because what, what, what did Jesus say when he came? He said, repent. For the kingdom of heaven has arrived. It's already here. So in order for us to really be kingdom citizens, in order for us to truly indeed live in the kingdom, seek ye, seek the kingdom of God first. Seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And then all of these other things that you're still praying about, all of these other things you're still begging about, all these other things you still think you need and think you want that you ain't supposed to have because we ain't seeking the kingdom. We got to seek the kingdom. How are we going to seek the kingdom if we ain't repentant? I know it's tight, but it's right. Don't hang up on me right now. I need you to hang up on the devil. How are we truly indeed going to walk in the power? How are we truly indeed going to walk in strength? How are we truly indeed going to walk in the anointing if we can't hang up on the devil? The devil can't have power and authority over our lives. We save. We love Jesus. Bishop doesn't preach Jesus died and rose all the time. And be, ah, it's still stuck. I ain't mad at nobody, but we got to tell the truth. We got to be delivered. We got to be set free from what the enemy has had us bound to. Because what happens is when we find ourselves still flirting with the devil and we say that we save and people that's not saved looking at us to see what salvation is, that's why a lot of people ain't saved yet because they looking at a lot of us. It may be the reason why some of our family members ain't saved. Because they looking at us. So we got to take, listen, I told y'all, I take stuff personal. We got to take this life of Jesus Christ personally. You got to take it personal. I'm not going to walk around here and say I'm the righteousness of Christ and living like the devil. I'm not going to walk around here saying that I'm a Christian and that I'm a saving, that I love Jesus and I can't control my flesh. 
devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. We will not continue in sin that grace may abound. But we're coming out from among them and we're going to be separate now. We hanging up on the devil. We ain't giving the devil no more time. We ain't giving the devil no more energy. We ain't giving the devil no more conversation because we understand that we have the responsibility. Proverbs 3 says, we have the responsibility to guard our hearts. Because out of our hearts flows the issues of life. What issues coming out of your heart? What's coming out of your heart? I know it's tight, it's right. I know it's hurting. That whooping don't feel good. But what's truly indeed coming out of your heart with your saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled self? What's coming out of your heart? When God has given us the responsibility to guard, we got the responsibility to guard our hearts. So what does that mean? That means I ain't running away from the Lord anymore. The Lord said, Adam, where are you? I heard your voice. And I ran. And we hid ourselves. Why are we running away from God? So many times we find ourselves in sin. And we're running away from God. We find ourselves... Knowing we ain't supposed to be doing that. And we run away from church. We ain't coming to church no more. We ain't studying our Bible no more. We ain't praying no more. Because we didn't had too many conversations with the devil. And we didn't hang up with him. And he got attached to our emotions. And he got attached to our hearts. And we start believing him more than we believe God. But tell somebody, today I ain't running away from God. I ain't hiding from him no more. I'm coming to him. I'm coming to him. He said that today when you hear my voice. Today, not tomorrow, not next week. Today, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. I bind up in the hardened hearts right now. Harden not your heart. As in the spirit of rebellion. We ain't going to continue to be rebellious. Because we want to continue in sin. The devil is a liar. And the father of lies. We hanging up on the devil today. We ain't arguing with him. We ain't fussing with him. We ain't dancing with him. We ain't holding hands with him no more. We're hanging up on the devil today. In the name of Jesus. We're not walking with him no more. We ain't dancing with him no more. We ain't partnering with the devil no more. We're hanging up on him today. We ain't worrying no more. We ain't stressing no more. We ain't going to continue in frustration no more. We ain't doubting God no more. Because we understand whom the Son has set free. Whom the Son has set free. If you say you saved and you say you sanctify and you say you filled with the Holy Ghost, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You ain't just free. You're free indeed. Why? Because Jesus already died. He died. He ain't dying no more. Next time he cracked that sky, it's to rapture his people up. Are you going to be a part of that rapture? If you don't die before he come, are you going to be a part of that rapture to where we're going up with Jesus? Because I tell y'all, the days and times that we're living in now, the Lord going to come real soon. That's why we got to get it right. We got to stop running from God. And we got to stay in the presence of the Lord. We got to stay locked in. We got to stay tied up. We got to stay tangled up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the only way that we're going to be able to stay anointed, the only way we're going to be able to flow in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh is we got to stay connected to God. We got to stay connected to this word. We 
can't stay connected to the devil and keep on flirting with the devil and think that our power is going to boo the devil away. It's not. That's why the devil keep on riding with a lot of us because we ain't took the time to get rid of the devil and hang up on the devil and stop entertaining the devil. Stop entertaining the devil. Stop giving the devil your time. Stop giving the devil your emotions. I told somebody, I'm not going to let nobody hijack my time. I'm not going to hijack my time because time is precious. Time is the only thing you ain't going to never get back. So if you ain't going to never give it back, why don't you find yourself spending time in this word? Why don't you find yourself spending time in prayer? Because understand this, when you pray the word, God has a responsibility to answer your prayer. Oh, y'all, okay, y'all acting like that over there. When you pray the word, God has a responsibility to act upon his word and his word only. Some people have been trying to figure out why my prayers haven't been answered. Because you ain't been praying the word and you ain't been living the word. You can't just live how you want to live and be how you want to be and think that you're going to get the reward. Come on, parents. Come on, parents. How many of us continue to reward our kids for doing wrong every time they're doing wrong and you still going to buy them everything they want? Oh, I got some, some parents like that. Oh, okay. Well, our father ain't like that. He wants us to live holy. He wants us to live righteous. And you know why? Because he's in us. We have this mind that was also in Christ Jesus. So when we understand that we have Christ Jesus' mind, what makes us think that we cannot function in the power of the Holy Ghost? What makes us think that we can't walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh when we understand that we have the mind of Christ? And because we have the mind of Christ, we understand that we can do all things through Christ. And when we understand we can do all things through Christ, then we understand that we are in Christ, the hope of glory. And when we understand that, then walking holy, walking righteous will be easy. Because I'm not depending on my own strength. I ain't depending on my own power. I ain't depending on my own education. I ain't depending on my own will. But I'm trusting and depending on the word of God. And I'm allowing the word of God to truly indeed be a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. And I'm hiding this word in my heart that I might not sin against God. I, I'm going to continue to sin if I don't hide this word in my heart. Period. If I don't have this word in my heart, if I don't have this word in my life, I'm going to continue to sin. Take it personal, and I'm rapping. Take it personal. Take your relationship with God personal. This ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't got nothing to do with Bishop. This got something to do with you and God. Tell somebody, I ain't hiding from the Lord no more. Some of y'all ain't said nothing to nobody. Tell somebody, I ain't hiding. You got to speak that thing. I need you to speak it aloud. Because once you speak it, you give life to it. And I need you to give life to it. I ain't hiding from the Lord no more. I'm coming out with my hands up. I'm coming out with my hands up. Yes, Lord, I will go. Yes, Lord, I will obey. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, Lord. Standing up all over the building, I dare you to just say, yes, Lord. Don't play with it. Don't you play with it. Don't you play with it. Where you are, you just reach out and say, Lord, yes. Lord, yes. Lord, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
This ain't about nobody but you and God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All God wants is a yes. That's all he wants. He wants a yes. 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 Yes, I'll seek you. Yes, I will seek you with all my heart. Because when I seek you with all my heart, then my heart can be healed. When I seek you with all my heart, that bruised and battered heart that I have, God will heal it. I got so many people your heart is still broken but today 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 thank you sister Mary today I'm making up in my mind and I'm just gonna hang up ain't arguing with the devil no more I ain't holding no more conversations with the devil no more. If I say anything to the devil, it's going to be, it is written. That's it. I ain't playing with the devil no more. Tell somebody, my, my, my heart been broken enough. Oh, yeah, I want to act funny. Oh, okay. Hands for the heart been broken enough that I'm going to do everything the Lord say. Because I don't like to have a broken heart. I don't like to give the devil time and give the devil energy and give him power to come into my life that God has given me for his honor and for his glory. And I keep on playing with the devil and then I have the audacity to get mad at God because I'm praying but I ain't want to let go of the devil. That's why I say stop asking for forgiveness and repent. 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 Because once you repent, you have made up in your mind that I am not turning back. I'm turning away and I'm going right to Jesus. 180, no 360. I ain't turning all the way around and coming right back to the same place I was. I'm doing a 180 and I'm going away from that thing that has caused me, caused me to continue to have a broken heart today. No more broken hearts. Today, no more confused minds. No more. No more broken hearts, no more confused minds, because I am being transformed. I'm doing a, that, that, there are metamorphosis that has to take place. There's a metamorphosis that has to take place. I, I'm, I'm being transformed today. Tell somebody I'm transforming today. Tell somebody I'm transforming today. You got to get tired of the devil. You got to get sick and tired of the devil to the point where you just transform. I ain't staying the same. I ain't playing with you no more. I'm transforming. Every hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, we command every demon, every devil, every imp that's been a harassing your people. Today, we command it to come out in Jesus' name. No longer would the devil hold your people hostage. No longer would the devil hold your people in prison. Today, we are free. And we are free indeed. Because you said, whom the Son is set free. It's free. Indeed. We're just not asking for forgiveness, God. But we are repenting. We are turning away from that sin. We're turning away from that thing 
that so easily beset us. And we're turning to you, Lord. We are dedicated and devoted to your word. We are dedicated and devoted to prayer. We're dedicated and devoted to fasting. Because we will no longer say yes to the devil. But we're hanging up on the devil right now. In Jesus' name. 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 If you need prayer, hurry up. Hurry up. Because that devil is alive. You need prayer, hurry up. Come on, come quickly. Don't play with it. Come quickly. Don't play with it. We ain't going to be bound no more. We ain't going to be entangled no more. We ain't struggling with this same demon no more. The devil is a liar. Hurry, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. You know if you need to get it right. Come quickly. Don't play with it. Get in this line. Hurry up. Hurry up. The devil is alive. Only cry out to him. Hallelujah. That's fine. Yes. Cry out to him because he's the only one that's going to save you. He's the only one that's going to set you free. Cry out. Hallelujah. Cry out. Cry out. Thank you, Jesus, for healing right now. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance right now. You got to cry out unto the Lord. When you cry out to the Lord, not only will he hear you, but he'll bring deliverance. The Bible said the righteous cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. But then the Bible said the righteous cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his troubles. So there are some righteous people that need to be delivered. You need to come right now and get your deliverance. There are some people that ain't saved that need to be saved. Come right now. Hallelujah, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You are healed. Turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you.
hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Today I am forgiven. His grace is while I'm living. Forever he will reign. My God is awesome. show up even when I don't see it show up you never stop you never stop for deliverance thank God for deliverance thank God for salvation hallelujah so we're not playing with the devil anymore we commit our lives and our heart totally to the Lord from this day forth we're hanging up on every call that the enemy gives us because we don't have time to play. And I ain't trying to scare nobody, but you got to get your life right. We're going to stop pledging allegiance to every demonic force and every wind and doctrine that come our way. We're not pledging allegiance to it anymore. We are denouncing the devil and everything that's connected to the devil. We're announcing every imp, every demon. We're denouncing it now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have communion? Amen. It's communion time. Amen. Anybody need? Anybody need communion? Lift your hands high. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. I have two to my left. Amen. We have deep behind you. He's coming. Amen. First Corinthians 11 chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't apologize for God doing what he wants to do. 
Amen. We, that's what we come here for. We come here for deliverance. We come here for healing. Hallelujah. We come here for salvation. Amen. That's what we come to the house of the Lord for. Anybody else? Lift your hands high. Amen. Second row. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. I have one up here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I have two in the back. Two in the back to my left. Amen. The Bible reads 1 Corinthians 11, starting at 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the Lord, be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in any unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. That's what we did today. We had to judge ourselves and get our lives right before God. Because we don't want the Lord to have to whoop us and, and beat us down because we don't want to get it right. He's given us the ability to get it right. So we got to get it right. We're hanging up on the enemy. We're judging ourselves and making certain that we are pleasing to God. Father God, we thank you right now. That whatever was in us, God, that was not like you, God, we thank you right now that it's out of us. We're denouncing every demonic force of the enemy that's tried to hinder us, that's trying to impede our body, trying to impede our mind, God. And we bring it into subjection unto your will. We're casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalted itself above the knowledge of Christ. And we're bringing it into captivity to your will. We thank you right now that our hearts and our minds are free. We are saved and we are delivered and we set free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. In this moment, we're taking the bread. Amen. This is my body, which is broken for you. You may take and eat. This cup is the new covenant of my blood. You may drink. Hallelujah. We decree and declare that every sickness in your body, every sickness that's overtaking your mind or overtaking your emotions, that you are delivered from it and free from it right now. In Jesus' name. No longer to be bound. No longer to be yoked up with the enemy. No longer. Hallelujah. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. For this time that we will partner with the Lord. Amen. We want you to be a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Not giving grudgingly. But we want you to be cheerful in your giving. As the Bible said, if you, if you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you shall weep bountifully. So we're asking you to be cheerful in your giving. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give God glory for you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. 
all choir members. Jesus promised he'll take care of you. I can't hear y'all. Jesus promised he'll take care of you. Jesus promised he'll take care of you. Everybody had an opportunity to sow your seed. Amen. I have one in the middle aisle. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody in the balcony had an opportunity to sow. Amen. Thank you. Everybody standing on your feet. Hallelujah. Thank God. Anybody want to be a member? Anybody wants to be a member? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. God bless you. Anybody else want to be a member? Amen. Faithful Missionary Baptist Church, amen. Greatest church on this side of heaven. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we allow you to go back, we're going to dismiss. Father God, we thank you for what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit being present in the house today. Cover us with your blood. Protect us. Keep us safe from our hurt, harm, and danger. We honor you. We bless you, God. What do you do? Real sweet, when a fork is in the road. When the world is on your shoulders. When your back is up against the wall. Do you do?